Now, in 2012, a woman disappeared from a hotel bar in Nanyuki in central Kenya after meeting two British soldiers stationed in the East African country. Months later, she was discovered murdered. Nine years on, her family and friends are still seeking justice, as DW correspondent Marielle Muller reports. Rose Wanjiko can well remember the last time she saw her sister Agnes. It was nine years ago. Even now, the loss still pains her. The day she went and never came back, that's the day we spoke for the last time. And I never saw her again. When I found her, she was dead. Agnes Wanjiro was just 21 years old when she vanished. An inquest concluded that she was killed by one or more British soldiers at a nearby hotel. It took two months to find Agnes Wanjiro's body here at this hotel in a septic tank. And less than three kilometers away from here in this direction is the camp of the British Army Training Unit Kenya. From there, soldiers used to come here to party, drink and have sex with local women. Agnes' body has been stabbed and her lungs crushed. The pathologist says she was probably still alive when she was dumped in the tank. Florence was one of the very last people to see her friend Agnes alive. She was sitting with two British soldiers at the hotel bar, she says. Her friend was hoping to exchange sex for money to feed her five-month-old baby. Back then, she could have identified the men, she says. We could have recognized them. Right now, we cannot recognize those guys. Too much of time has been wasted. A deal recently signed between Kenya and the UK is worth about 12 million euros a year. It allows 3,000 British troops to train nearby Nanyuki. Observers say that could have been an incentive to not investigate. British soldiers are alleged to have committed ongoing abuse over recent decades. In 2013, Amnesty International said that at least 650 women had been raped by British soldiers since the mid-1960s. But even today, the troops are still abusing their position of strength, Agnes friend Florence tells us. They are violent, they beat them, harassing them sexually. Kenyan girls, most of them, they are desperate. That is why they take advantage for Kenyan girls. An investigation by a British newspaper, The Sunday Times, found the murder was reported to high-ranking officers shortly after it happened, but they took no action. Only now, following the media reports, has the Kenyan police reopened investigations into the killing. Britain's Minister for the Armed Forces, James Heapy, said the UK is willing to extradite the suspects to face justice in Kenya. Agnes and her family have already had to wait too long for these cases to be resolved. We need that now to be investigated and brought to the courts here in Kenya as quickly as is possible. Rose has now instructed a British law firm to challenge the Ministry of Defence's failure to investigate her sister's killing. Her biggest hope is that she'll one day receive financial compensation to provide a good education for Agnes' daughter. Stacy was just a baby when her mother was killed. Let's explore this with Gikri Gishohi, who's a Kenyan public prosecutor whose work focuses on police accountability, deaths, murder and manslaughter. Welcome to DW. So we have a, an inquest concluding two years ago that uh, Agnes was killed by British soldiers. Why has Kenya waited so long to call for their extradition? Um, we have been engaging with the British government on many levels, investigative, uh, prosecutorial, and also at a multi-agency level. We haven't been doing nothing between the two years. We've been working very well together in the background. One of the things you haven't done, though, in that two years is call for um, the extradition of these soldiers. So why does this call now, two years later, seem to coincide with the media furore that's going on in the UK? What has been happening in the background is we've been liaising with the agencies involved so that we make sure that the investigation is done in a manner that will allow a successful extradition and a successful prosecution in this matter. Understood. So just so we're clear, um, the, the decision of Kenyan prosecution authorities to, to ask for this extradition has nothing to do with the media storm around uh, this case. Um, this matter has already been worked on even before the media came on board.
OK, that wasn't quite the, the, the answer, the yes or no that I was looking for. Um, we heard in the report that key witnesses to uh, Agnes's death were not interviewed. Why? Um, if you look at the inquest findings, um, all the key people who had been identified in the investigation file came to the court and gave their testimony. One of the running themes was they were not able to properly identify everyone who was involved in this matter. And that is where one of the things that the findings was, was that, yes, it was someone linked to the UK, but we needed further investigations to identify exactly who it was. And that but is it, what it, has been going on. But DW doesn't have the, 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 still, the, the resources of, of Kenya State Prosecutor. We found witnesses to this event who say they were not asked about what they saw that night. So why could we find them and you couldn't? Now, the question is, um, what witnesses did you find and what was their relations? Well, you heard with? the report. Because that, that we, we have witnesses I, who say that they could identify these soldiers. Had all the witnesses that were in relation to this matter. We then went to an inquest, and an inquest is a public call for anyone who has information to the death of certain someone to come and give that information. Any information you have would be gladly accepted and would be able to share it with the relevant authorities. Investigation can only be done by the investigative authorities so that the information can have probative value. And that is the most important thing, so that the information we get is turned into evidence that can be used in this matter. Understood. Thank you so much for joining us and clarifying that. Gikri Gishohi from Kenya's Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. Thank you very much.